Uh, before we start, just want to, uh, you know, publicly acknowledge and thank uh, KP for all he's done for the organization. I'm calling him, although it was my first time calling somebody when they get traded, he was extremely gracious. Uh, you know, he was extremely thankful that I, you know, reached out to him, called, and, and he was he handled like a professional, which since my time being here, he's been nothing but a professional. Um, extremely uh, diligent worker, always in the gym, on days off, always working on his body. And for that, I, I thank him. Um, in terms of Spencer and Bertans, I think, I think both of them give us a lot of flexibility for the future and they add depth to our roster. So I'm excited to get them in here and get them in the rotation. Um, other than that, your questions? When did you start thinking that KP was a player that you were looking to move and what was the reasoning behind it? You know, I think it wasn't just about KP. It was about really giving ourselves the flexibility um, that we needed to be the team we want to be. And I think, I think that's really the bottom line. Is like we were able to give ourselves more flexibility and then add more depth. Did you get out of this trade exactly what you wanted when you went into it? I think we made our our team better, for sure. And and we we gave ourselves more flexibility. I mean. When you say, "Did I get everything we wanted?" You know, you, you always want to hit a home run, but but we definitely uh, we, we're better off um, today than we were yesterday. And the team was 16 and five going into the trade. Did that play into it in a way? Because KP missed 12 of those games. Yeah, I mean, I think the whole that that went into the whole um, trade deadline. You know, the way we were playing, you had to look at everything differently because, you know, from December on, we've been playing really good. Mm -hmm. So what you thought going into it versus what you have now, you had to reevaluate everything. Um, so yeah, definitely played a role. When you go when you mentioned more flexibility, is that in terms of financial side more so, or is that in terms of rotation and having different options on the court? It's really both. It's flexibility both, but but more importantly it's depth too. You know, if you look at if you look at our depth in terms of like playmakers, you know, within that. Um, if you look at our depth in terms of three-point shooting, you know, with Timmy out, we're thin there. So it, it, it's, it works both ways. How much was KP's availability part of this, just whether you could count on him to be there when it mattered and he was? I think it was less about his availability and really more about how do we make the team better. Um, you know, because, listen, I think, I think if you look at KP's, they were knick-knack injuries. If it was a playoffs, he, he could have played. Um, so I don't, I don't think it, they were in. They were like, you know, stuff that during the season you might sit out, but in the playoffs you would play. So it's, I don't think they were concerning. How quickly or not quickly did this come together? Was it a last-minute deal that fell together, or, or had it been in the works? Um, it wasn't. I mean, <laughs> this is my first trade deadline, so I don't really have anything to to uh, compare it to, but. Listen, we had tons of conversations with a bunch of different teams, and this was the one that that made the most sense, and we we executed on it. And what what has made the most sense? What 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 about this trade did you? What factors did you decide made the most sense to go with this first hypothetical other deals? Well, it you know, like I said at the beginning, I think it's the versatility that it gave us and the depth um, and the flexibility. I just think it just it just it worked. It made sense. What type of player is uh, Dinwiddie, and what type of player is Bertrand? I think in, in Dinwiddie you're going to get a, a score and a, and, a, and a ball handler, um, and I think with Bertans you're going to get a professional that can really shoot the ball. Um, you know, one's more athletic than the other, but but you know even Bertans wa watching a lot of film on him, like defensively, he knows how to play defense. He knows positions where to be, he really works on that. Um, some, some people aren't going to have the quickest feet, but if you know how to play defense, if you, if you really try and you position yourself right, you're going to be a lot better. And he, he does a really good job of doing that. As far as Moses, he just wasn't there yet, quick enough for you guys. Yeah, it's, it's also a roster, roster spot. You only have so many roster spots. So when you trade one and you uh, bring back two, you gotta make, you got to make, uh, make room. So. Um, and, and Moses, you know, unfortunately, um, thank you for bringing that up. Moses has been great. You know, that's why we guaranteed his contract.
because Moses worked his butt off. Like literally, he would carry his notebook every day. And Coach Sweeney and those two worked every day. And if you guys know anything about Coach Sweeney, he lives in that in that uh, building back there. And so he would he would uh, work out Moses every day. He brought his notebook, watched film. He would watch film the games he didn't play um, of what coverages he was supposed to do if he did play. Um, and, he, and, you know, when he was playing in December when we had a lot of COVID, he started making a lot of progress. He just he just needs to play. He's going to be fine. He's, he's an NBA player. He just needs more playing time. Nico, do you feel like you have all the pieces that match of all the pieces they need to make a deep playoff? I, I think we're still I think we're still um, I think we're good enough to compete. I mean I don't think we're scared of anybody. I think we're good enough to compete. It remains to be seen, but I also think that we also have room for improvement. Um, but but I do like the team. Nico, that was sorry, that was going to be my next question too. Is do you feel like this roster is set now, or is the buyout market something you're going to keep an eye on? No, I think with us, I think we're set, you know, just because, of, you know, if you look at our roster, roster availability and spots are, are a premium, so I think we're set. Sounds like uh, Dorian is uh, 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 perhaps going to be signed long term. How, how much of a uh, uh, no brainer was that one? Because uh, obviously he's been very good at the same Yeah, he's been amazing. He has a beautiful spirit. Um, just being around him, he, he, he uplifts everybody. It was, it was one of those those phone calls. You, you have the bad phone calls where you gotta, you know, deliver bad news, and then you, you get to uh, have a good one. And, and so we're we're excited about about the possibility of uh, of extending Dorian. He's he's deserves it. Um, it's great for him and his family. Um, I, you know, it's 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 all good. How difficult was that phone call to KP? Because obviously. Probably thought he had a long future here in Dallas. Yeah, it's always difficult, you know, when you deliver bad news. Um, it's, you know, in my in my old world, you know, we went through a lot of reorganization, so we had to let a lot of people go. So you have to make those phone calls. But in this case, um, I, I don't, I don't think this is as difficult as that. Uh, but it, it's always difficult. But like I said, he handled it like a professional. He was uh, extremely upbeat, like he's like he is every day when he comes to work. Um, he was totally professional. Have one on Zoom. Yep, got one on Zoom. Kevin, go ahead and now. Nico, when you look at this trade, why was this the right time to move Porzingis in light of what this team was building toward, and why you felt that this was the right time to go ahead and make this move? Um. Timing really just becomes about when it's available, you know. Um, the reason why it was the right time is because the trade just came together. Um, and I think we've had enough time to value, you know. One of the things I talked about with you all from the very beginning is really wanting to be around the team and know the team and be able to evaluate the team. And I think we had enough time <clears throat> to do that so we know who we are as a team and what we need to do to get better. So I think, I think that all played a role into it. Uh, yeah, dude, we can go to questions right now. Lucas, Lucas question, he was great. <laughs> 51. He was, he was really good. I'm just joking. Go ahead. Just your overall uh, thoughts on the trade and what you guys got and what you guys gave up. Yeah, um, that's just part of the business. Um, KP was, you know, I talked to him um, this morning, this afternoon. And uh, he was great. He, again, he did everything uh, f for us, um, but it's just part of the business. You know, trades take place. Uh, he's going to do great in, in Washington. Um, and, you know, that's just that's, that's what it is. It's just the business. What do you like about the two guys that you got in return? Uh, we got depth, uh, playmaking, shooting. Um, those, uh, they're veterans. And so that's what that's uh, that's what I like about you know those two coming. How much of a concern was KP's availability from your standpoint as you're trying to build the continuity going toward the playoffs? Yeah, it's, it wasn't. There was nothing about this his availability. He did everything uh, when he could play. You know, that's just injuries, COVID. Um, you know, play a part in this league. Um, and, and when he played, he he played for us at a very high level this season. Um, 
defensively, changed shots, did everything we asked him on the defensive end, and then um, we let him be a basketball player there on the offensive end, posting up, uh, shooting threes, playmaking. Um, he did everything we asked, and uh, you know, again, in this business, uh, people get traded, um, and, and you move on. In what ways do you see the team being different going forward with the two new guys and without? Uh, I don't know. Right, that's a good question, Brad. We gotta get some minutes under the belt, but I can tell you, um, tonight's team looked pretty good. Um, Luca was uh, was was aggressive from the start, um, and the guys uh, just went for the ride. Um, but again, I think late game being able to get stops, but someone's gonna have to make a shot because they're not gonna let Luca shoot it. And then I thought the guys did a good job there. When you had your press conference after getting hired, you talked about. Porzingis is being the perfect co-star for Luca. Obviously, things change, things evolve. Do you think you guys need to find a co-star for Luca eventually for this team to be able to compete for championships, or can he be kind of the lone star with you know a, a solid supporting cast around him and put you in that spot? Yeah, Tim, that's a good question. Um, I think talent. You always want talent um, to win championships, and so. Um, We'll see. Uh, I'm just I'm the coach who has to put them guys in a position to be successful, um, get paid, find a way to win. Um, and so, as we go through this journey, we'll see if we, if we come across a, a, you know a number two guy. Um, it could be the team that we have with. There is no real second star. You just got guys who play roles at a very high level, um, and you've seen teams win championships that way too. Was that 2011 team one of those teams with that one superstar? And yeah, you had one superstar and the rest were burgers. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean that. But that's, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, we, 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 we all accept that. <laughs> we know our roles. Yeah. Well, Tim, you know, you talked about the Warriors last night. Yeah. Uh, what do you think during that first quarter with Luka going off like that? <laughs> how things have changed. Um, because in the first half, I mean, in, in the early part of the season, we weren't making any shots, and, and then Luca decided to make them all. Uh, it was it was a, a really fun thing to watch. Didn't have to do much. Just try to stay out of the way. Um, and to be selfish, you wanted him to make those free throws so that he didn't miss any shots. Um, but he was he, it was incredible. Um, he's, re again, we talked about this after every game of latest. He's making all the right decisions. Um, and tonight was an offensive uh, night for him shooting the ball uh, because of the switching. Um, he, he did a great job. And then also finding his teammates. But um, it, I, I don't even know if the, our big burger did that in 2011. I, I don't know if he ever scored 50 points. Had 48 against OKC in the playoffs. Remember that one? Oh, yeah, I'm a, somebody must have shot the ball so he couldn't get 50. Well, he got like 62 free throws in that game. So. <laughs> well, then, yeah, no, no, I mean, well, that will take those 48 in the playoffs. But it was great. He, I, I thought he just read the defense and did everything he was supposed to do tonight. And uh, now we got to prove, as we all know, it's hard to beat a team two times in these uh, home and home games.